morning and welcome to Car Pursuit episode five. You join me this time on a lovely little day ticket complex just off the M25 called Albans Lakes. Now you've got Farm Lake, which is the one we're on. So bear with it, let's give it a go. Welcome to episode five of Car Pursuit. We are at Farm Lake, which is at St Albans, just off the M25. Now, last month's one was amazing. Oxley's didn't batter it like we did on B2, but a 39 pound car. Now, where we are now, I think there's one approaching that, and I'm gonna be very lucky to get that. Well, there you go. Before that, before I spin that, we need to know what that, and that behind the camera I'm referring to is Steve, as to what he's got in mind for me this time. So let's have a little look, Stevie. Yeah, as always, three challenge cards with three different challenges. Do what did I take know? last time, the middle one, didn't I? I don't know, you've mixed the what? The, which one's the middle now? Well, it doesn't really matter now, does it? So we'll go for... Challenge number three. Right. <laughs> this needs some explaining. Right, catch a carp on each rod. Well, that's fine. But if you catch a catfish, which there are a few in here, then you've got to discount the fish. You're gonna to have to explain that one, mate. Yeah, so basically what you've got to do is catch a carp on each of your rods. It doesn't have to be left to two right, it can be each rod. But if you catch, say, two carp, then a catfish, you have to start all over again. So you to catch a carp, one on each rod, right. sit, um, after each other without having a catfish. Just so it can't be like three on one rod. It's gotta be... No. No. One on right, middle. Okay, so at least I know what we're doing. And then we'll get a catfish. None of them count at all. No, but it'd be <laughs> nice to see them on the bank. No, it wouldn't at all. You know my history <laughs> with catfish. Oh my God. Yeah, well, there you go. So yeah, we'll take that on, mate. There's a few, there are a few cats in here. Quite a few carp. Um, yeah, we'll have a look. We'll take it on anyway. So now we've got, to, we've got to spin this. And there's a couple on there. Yeah, I reckon we've I've got to say, or, or the boiling meat or pellet would, uh, is going to ruin me. Ruin the uh, catfishing. Right, right, let's spin it. <laughs> See that challenge? I think in a couple of days' time I'll be saying, well, I caught nothing because they've all been dismissed because pellet in this lake attracts fish that are about that long. But we'll have a go. Pellet fishing, love pellet fishing. Little bags, I think, to start. Put a bit of bait out later. Till then, let's get the barrow in the swim and get set up. to the peg as you can see everything is set up because we did have a fair old shower of rain but I've asked the right boxes here to find out exactly what I'm going to use to try and avoid the catfish which I know it's pellet of some description oh there you go my favorite pink hit and runs and yellow hit and runs now if they don't catch in here you can hang yourself halibut oh mate I can see my three or four carp that I'm clearly going to catch straight away, being disqualified immediately. Different size marine halibuts. Eight mil marine halibut, loads and loads of them. That though, I do use a fair bit in my own fishing. So the shrimp extract, cats or not, that has got to be used to dip the bags in. Brilliant bit of stuff. And we've got marine halibut oily liquid attractant. So I think it's going to be almost impossible. We're going to catch carp. I'm pretty sure of that, but to avoid catfish, I don't know. I really don't know. Well, there you go. Two, do you have a box of the same, Stevie? Uh, yeah, six mils in that one. Oh, lovely. And I've also got some complex tea in the van, but I didn't want to break my back lugging all of this bait. So, yeah, fingers crossed you can have it. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, what you mean is, fingers crossed you get it. What about if I catch a catfish first? The carp still count after? Yeah, because you still then got to do three consecutive. Right, we'll, have, we'll empty the swimmer catfish first, hopefully, and get ourselves some carp. Brilliant, brilliant bait, but also brilliant bait for Mr Whiskers. Right, having got set up in the swim and found out what Steve has subjected me to, copious amounts of pellet and some little hit and runs. That's fine, uh, the catfish thing might set me back a little bit, but it's fishing. Now I've had a little lead around since we've got set up, found a nice spot off the side margin now, it's 18 wraps just off a little bush, the other two where I'm seeing fish, I've seen a couple stick their heads out, I've dropped a light lead on it, it's 15 wraps, so on the left and middle I'm just going to put little mesh bags to start with, with your complex tee, which is where my confidence really does lie. And the right hand one is going to be a single pop up. I'll tell you why, because I slipped through the gate here with the bucket and the catapult, went round there, and there's a little frigate bush. I'm fishing just behind that in about seven, eight foot of water, and I've put probably a kilo bag with a catapult all around the outside of that bush, so that doesn't require a bag. I'm just going to drop a little yellow one on that, and on the other two, I'm going to try one of the pink ones and a yellow one on that. So um, without further ado, as they say, let's get these rods in the water, hopefully get the only catfish at this end of the lake, get it out of the way, and then we'll catch some carp. After the rain had passed, I cast a single yellow hit and run over to the far margin where I'd previously baited up with a mixture of complex tea and halibut pellet. The other two rods had a small mesh bag of pellets attached and then soaked in the halibut oil and shrimp extract. Right, we have been fishing, I have been fishing, two hours now, seen a few here, done a bit of baiting up like I said earlier, uh, there's been two show right over that, Oof, even when we had the drone up, literally on it. Been told by the bailiff the morning periods have been the better, which we, we sort of missed that, but they are, there's a good few here, good few liners, I keep dotting the, I'm keeping the one off the little bush in the water, which is at um, 18 wraps where I put the pellet half a kilo or a kilo of pellet. These other two rods, I keep moving them around with little bags and little, um, well, the hit and runs on the end. So I'm um, surprised, I've got to say, we've only fished for two hours, but I am surprised we haven't had a bite, which might seem a bit egoy, but I've put bags on enough fish within this 12, sort of 15 wrap area here to have had a take. And we've had a few streams of bubbles, but then I'm, I am also remembering there's quite a few little cats in here, so um, the stream, I had a liner earlier, I nearly picked it up, it sort of hovered at the rod, which means it, I think it was quite a long fish, and then after about 20 seconds just dropped back to where she started, which if you can imagine a four foot long catfish, and the line's going along that catfish, that's what's going to happen. I've had it before in other venues, so I'm pretty sure that's a cat, but um, I'm going to keep moving the two rods about for the afternoon, I'll settle on somewhere for this evening if they show in one area more than the others, but literally around this corner they've been going boop, 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 boop. And those that know me, I cannot sit on my hands. I've got plenty of bags tied, plenty of it and runs. Keep trying till something happens. And then when it happens, Premium we'll carry on trying again. <laughs> o'clock and to be fair we've given it best part of the day with the little bags and bright bright baits anyway because that's what I've got to use um, we've given it best part of the day with chasing them around this area there's still a few here now but they're up in the water the challenge for me is not to fish digs which it was before on working the ox leaves um, so now's the time 
The bay lift, in all fairness, has said that, that morning period, which was when we were setting up and arriving, has certainly been the best time for bikes of late. So we're going to start prepping now. I don't know, half a dozen or 10 spoms when we pellet. I found a nice area just at the back of a bumpy bit, 18 wraps straight at that pylon, which is double handy, because that one off that bush over the edge is also 18 wraps. So we'll stick a few of these out there and then get the rods prepped just before we stick some dinner on. On the money! But there is a still, still a few showing here, but they are literally on the surface. Now, if we weren't doing what we're doing, I'd have put, I know it's seven foot out there, I've had a cut of five, maybe five and a half foot zigs out there, but that isn't what's in line with what my lovely friend Stephen has set me to do, which involves pellet on the lake bed. <laughs> I don't know. I'm guessing this is my first bite of the day, but I'm going to guess at the moment I think it's a cat. We'll see, you know. It's over the pet. Oh, it's, I don't know, though. It's on the top, so I'm not sure if cats do that very often. It did take a lot of line initially. A lot of line. But it's over the pellet. Oh, there we go again. See that? Look at that. <laughs> that has to be the 20 pound catfish, doesn't it? Fingers crossed, it's one of the big fish in here. I think we know. See, this is the thing on that Stephen is an annoying little man. Well, it's not his choice, actually. I've got to take that back. I apologise. I apologise. It was a spin of the wheel. It's probably going to go over that side there. Spin of the wheel that chose the pellet. Oh, no, you can't. Um, at least it gets one cat out of the way, doesn't it? It's coming down this side of the island, no, he's... We never know. But he's been slicking up on that pellet. Now, I put about 15 bombs of pellet out there. Here we go again. Here we go again. About 15 bombs of pellet out there. Oh, yeah, it's just got to be a cat. I ain't having it. Mate, this... This is not a carp, Steve. Look. I think by now, after it's probably about 15 minutes, we have definitely decided it's a catfish. <laughs> and now, just to rub salt in the wound, it hasn't only taken out that rod, my banker rod, but it's starting to rain. Oh, blimey. He's only got to get in them. There's a lot of marginal snags to my right. If he gets in there, we ain't getting him out. Wow. Do you know what? They are so, so powerful, these fish. We've come this far, we might as well try and get him in. Don't go backwards, you git. She's in. <laughs> so we have no pellet left out there, a six foot slug, a wiped out rod, and I'm soaking bloody wet. Happy days. Happy days. <laughs> oh. Evening update. One rod snapped off, but we've got the rig back. One rod's still in catfish, so the rig's still in that. It's pouring down the rain. 
everything was set for the night, perfect. And I'd literally just hit the Steve. Got an off slicking up out there. Boom. There's a catfish about that long in my net awaiting whatever we're gonna do with it. I think we should maybe show you this, the culprit of all this, but I'm gonna give him 10 minutes. I'll uh, get the rods back in play. This might lighten up a little bit by then. And I'll um, get him out and show you. Not, the, not that I actually think you wanna see him, but we're gonna show you anyway. You've gotta join in this, cause it's jolly. Thank you. Butch. Are we on? We're on. We're on and we want to talk about this. <laughs> right, well I did think, we always think it's bigger when you're playing it. These things are like a steam train. I'll tell you how much it weighs in a minute, but look at this. Oh God, how do catfish anglers even enjoy this? Look, <laughs> funny face time. That, <laughs> that goes the jacket. Hey, how do they do this? It's like a five foot tadpole. Look at it. Right, it weighs 37 pounds. We both thought it was going to be about 50 pounds, but it doesn't really matter, does it? Because, oh. <laughs> At this freaking moment in time, if you're watching this, which I hope you are, you're thinking, Ian doesn't catch catfish very often, but I don't catch him this big, or this long. And because he's been eating over the pellet, there's loads of pellet all over the bottom of the mat. So we'll just show you, it's, oh my God, look at that, he's trying to get in. <laughs> Mate, we're not being cruel to it, it's a lovely fish, but um, we ain't gonna get, look, he's going backwards. What is that? Why do you go backwards? Do you know what I think that'd be good? I saw someone do that with a carp thing the other week. Um, enough of that, Ryder, we ain't gonna get. Look at that, there he is. There he is, look at that. Mmm. <laughs> that is disgusting. But I'm not gonna pick him up because I don't wanna mess around with him too long. He lives, he lives in the lake and he needs that water. But you are a beautiful creature, but not the creature we want. 37, no pellet left, soaked to the skin. This has been like a weather report really, isn't it? Like them guys on the telly. Raining, bored. Blah, 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 but there you go, we've had a fish. Uh, not quite what we want though. Now you're gonna want a picture on your Steve. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, that's lovely, mate. There you go, darling, look at you. Look at that. They are a beautiful creature. But they're not what we fish for, so um, it's a bit wasted, really. I've got mates of fish for them. And do you know what? Having caught that little one, I think they're all balmy. What the hell is wrong with them? Right, it's almost end of play from the first day. I'm a poet, I didn't know it. We've had, uh, I wanna say we, the only occurrence I've had is that catfish to be fair. There's a lot of carp showing sporadically around this area now. So we're hopeful for the night ahead. It's about an hour till dark now. Um, the, again, the bailiffs have said early morning which is it's about right most venues we go to it's the early morning period unless of course we get woken up in the night by another five foot long 37 pound mottled skinned catfish but until then i'm now been designated chef so i'm going to go and make some wraps of cheese slices and sausages and tomato sauce so i know it's an often said thing if we get them in the night or even in the next hour while I'm doing the old cooking up and all that, you'll see us. If not, you'll see us first thing in the morning, and hopefully it'll be old a carp, not a cat. Thank you.
With the rods all set, I sat back as it turned from day to night and it wasn't too long before the first rod was away. with a light, it's 300,000 now. Beastie boys, doesn't it? Yeah. Right, we've got to start. Well, there you go, 11 p.m. Just, just sort of nodding off, and the bobbin hits the butt. This again is over the, it's over the catfish area actually. Not going to weigh him. He's a tiny little thing, but do you know what? He's a carp. It's what we've come for. And I can hear the same rod giving liners behind you guys. So maybe things are about to happen. I've heard a few in the dark, but yeah, we we'll give him low doubles. But most of all, we're going to give him. Once you're the catfish, I would probably have ate him, but I'm very pleased I've got a Just carp. as a little snack. <laughs> Just as a snack. It's like a, it'd be like you having a custard cream, Steve, with your tea. Uh, no, pleased to be off the mark. Bit of more pleased if he was three times his size, but he ain't. Carp number one is in the net. There you go, darling. To the catfish about send your bigger brother but i will say it about that carp send your bigger brother read you the rod back to bed right i think we're at about what's 12 one o'clock now and i've just had one on the uh on the left rod which means we've had two rods go now and this i'm literally it's, i've just netted it sign of a fresh rig and as you can hear there, it's a very upset one there. Um, the middle one's gone again. This is the rod I had the cat on earlier and the first little calf earlier. So I don't think it's a cat. If it is a cat, it's, a, it's giving us a bit, but it's, um, it's coming easy. It's taking a bit of a time to get it in, isn't it? Come on, show yourself. It's a cat. It's a carp. Did you see it, Steve? I did. Oh, yeah, it's carp. Right, it's jump, <laughs> jump there. It's a nice fish as well, mate. Comparing to his pals, that's a good one, look. Chunky one. We were praying for one carp. Look, multiple nets. We had the first one a few hours ago, a little tiny one. I suppose we got one a bit, fair bit bigger than him, and then again a fair bit bigger than him now. So um, the kick, the uh, baited area, He's really throwing them up now, and no more cats yet. Fingers crossed. I've just got to get one on the right hand rod now, because I've had two carp on the middle, one on the left. So I need one on the right hand rod, challenge completed, and then what I don't need is a catfish, because apparently it'll knock them all off the scoreboard and we start again. I reckon you need to get some more colour out there. I am definitely going to be spot well. Once I've readdressed this rod and sorted these fish out, I'm going to stick another half a dozen spots or spots out because there can't be much left out there now, not after a cat and three carp. So I will have to address that. But till then, I'm going to get this rod back in play um, because them two bites have come bang, bang within minutes of each other. There's obviously a group of fish out there. So we need to cut this hook link, get a fresh hook link on, boom, get that out. And then we'll have a look at these fish. Yay! With the fish safely retained in the net, I wasted no time in getting that rod straight back out onto the spot. Perfect. Perfect. Hey, offering number two for the night. It is 1 a.m. now, a couple of hours after we had the first one, and we've got another one a little bit bigger than this waiting in the net. So the spotted area is chucking them up now, which is brilliant, because there was loads of fish out there. I mean, it's just that we said it all day. An obvious thing to say is if it hasn't happened in the day, it'll happen in the night. I know it's an obvious thing to say, but there were so many out there, we were amazed we weren't getting bites, especially off the baited area. But there you go. Farm Lake number two, a lovely little sort of scattered linear really, probably mid doubles, very very welcome though, I think this is going to be sort of 15 to 18 is your, your sort of average in here, but there you go, feisty little, little monkey, 
They've had a spawn about a week ago, so I'm told, which is why there's a few little scales lifted. But um, happy days, slipping back, and I'll get uh, I'll get the next one out because he's a little bit bigger than this one. Thank you very much, Mr. Linear. See you later, bruv. And offering number three, 24 pound, a very plump little mirror carp. Now the last two look like they've been through a war zone with scales lifted and whatever, because Craig said you know, a week or so ago they had a good spawn. This one definitely hasn't, he's as plump as they come. 24 pounds of plump little mirror carp. But we're on free fish and that dreaded catfish. Uh, I need one on the right hand rod and that is challenge completed. Now if I get one on the right hand rod, Steve, before I get a cat, that is challenge completed, isn't it? Correct, yeah. Oh, but if I get a cat, it wipes the board. Back to zero. This is great, isn't it? I'm gonna phone the office on, on, on Wednesday and complain, I'll tell you now. But yeah, we're very pleased. Uh, I'd rather get them in the daylight, obviously, but whenever they come, they come. Now I need to get him back, get another half a dozen um, bait deliveries out there, spoms out there, and top it up, because we've had four bites off that spot now, and I'm pretty sure there'll be hardly anything left. So we're gonna risk spooking you and your mates, and um, top it up. Here we go. Right, there we are. He's bristling to get back, so we're slotting back. Yeah, chubby checker. Number three, and we are hearing them over this right hand margin where the right hand rod is, which hasn't done a bite yet. So please, please do a bite. Now, that will be challenge complete. <laughs> well, here's a turn up, isn't it? Bite number four. Do you know, after putting that 24 pounder back, I did say I'm gonna stick another half a dozen out, but um, I was redoing the rigs and Steve said, mate, I wouldn't because they are boshing out all over that area where this one is. And um, there you go. Before I got the chance, I've tied one rig that's now hanging in the, in the brolly system. And, um, and as you can hear, that's this one going through that line. Um, yeah, got another bite on the middle rod. We're still waiting for the, the one on the right end rod to complete what Steve has set me to do. Hectic night though, no complaints. It had to happen at some stage, there was that many out here. Look at him, he is definitely a, a very unhappy fish. Very unhappy. There we are. There we have. Another very angry farm lake. Smoothly done. Let's get it. Same old routine, cut the hook link, fresh hook link, bump, wrap it up, get it out there, and then we'll show you what we've got. There we go. Gift number four. Still waiting for the right hand rod to go to complete this challenge, but we are here to catch carp. It is kicking off in the middle of the night, as you can see, but um, keep them coming. it probably die off in the morning, so we'll catch as many as we can until then. So if it means being up all night, so be it. We can sleep tomorrow. Look at you. Lovely little feisty, I'm guessing mid-double. Three doubles and a 24 pounder. That's all right for any night's fishing really, isn't it? They are so, they're fighting so hard. Look at him, will not settle. But there you go, number four, let's get him back. The rods are back in play, plenty of line bites going on. Steve, as I'm messing around with this one, Steve see another one come right out over the spot, so I'm not gonna rebate it yet. We're just gonna bide me time. If I go an hour or so with no bites, here we go, hear that? We'll, um, we'll stick a couple more spawns out there. Till then, let's get you back home and catch one of your big brothers. The right hand rod did spring into life eventually, an hour after sunlight. 
26 pounds, and I'm guessing he's one of the old guard. Look at him, that is a very, very old, very spawned out common carp. I'm guessing he, he might even go close to 30 pounds when he's full up, but he's 26 pounds now. But what it does mean to me and Stephen is I've completed the challenge. This was the right hand rod that I kept banging on about all night long because it's going to kick in a minute. Oh, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Banging on about all night long. We needed to get a fish on that right hand rod before we got another, before, before we got another catfish. I think you've done well to get all of them caught without a catfish. I was convinced <laughs> that it was nigh on him. No, no, no. You weren't convinced. You were wishing that I'd get another one. But um, this is any ironic though. The only bite on the right hand rod is the biggest fish so far. Yeah. Isn't it? But to be fair, you know, I said it was a big grey mirror. I saw a big grey head, and it could have actually been that one. Yeah, more than likely, mate. You know, I say he's dead, he's well down in weight, but he's a big old fish. He's, an old boy, he's nearly yeah. filled the sling up lengthwise. But chuffed to bits, we've still got a day and a night ahead of us, so we just have a bit of fun fishing now. Catch some more. And pick him up again and start that again. He's a fucking nutcase. Will you chill out, mate? This is not the acrobatics. Right. We've still got a day and a night ahead of us, so we'll just have some fun fishing. We'll slip this really angry, worn out, the, the fins and everything's worn out on him, bless his heart. I'm gonna get you back, buddy, and sit the day out, and it's lovely. It's meant to be raining later, Steve. Yeah. We don't look it at the moment, does it? Yeah. And there you go, let's put him down. 26, challenge completed, keep your catfish. Do you angry? You just knew he was gonna do that, didn't you? Mr. Angry. That is the angriest carp I think I've caught in a great many years. But, challenge completed. Look at him. <laughs> he's just he's absolutely bonkers, mate. Tea on, kettle shall I say. Power to the challenge. Good angling, Mr. Russell. Just loved it, mate. Right. Well, on carp a shoot, we normally get 48 hours, but it's not because we completed the challenge, to be fair. They've started spawning on the end, against the end island we're not going to stay there. If we hadn't completed the challenge, I'd still be reeling in and so would Steve to make our way home because um, it really isn't the done thing, is it? But the trip has been really cool. And that last fish this morning, maybe that was it. Maybe it was fate. You know, yesterday evening, a nice big cat... Did I say nice? A great... <laughs> Shut up, Steve. A great big catfish. For me, a great big one anyway. Well, not for them cat England boys, that ain't. But a great big catfish. And throughout the night... I had four carp, which, which was, um, it was middle left, middle left, and I'm hanging on the rod that was here against that side wall, and with every fish I was saying, oh God, I need the right one to go to complete the challenge before one of these goes. Bear in mind when it's out there on that spot mix, there's a lot going on, so that's also going to attract another catfish, and the catfish would have set me back to zero score. Um, it wasn't to be. Just after half an hour into daylight, boom, in bed obviously because we're been exhausted, been up nearly all the night, and off the side margin, lovely old, really old, 26 pound um, common. Now, when Craig the bailiff came in earlier, that fish has made 32 pounds in the past, and it did look it, didn't it? It was totally spawned out, and I'm guessing, same as other lakes that I've fished this, this last month or so that we pulled off, um, it's different year classes, because the big and older, older fish, Craig, they spawned last week, you know, the, the little ones in the night had a little bit of scarring on. The 24 head hadn't spawned at all. The 26 clearly had spawned completely out. So anyway, with that done, we're going home because it's very hot and sweaty. My arm's really itchy. I don't know if I've got a sticking little thing on it or something. Not your problem. That's my problem. But we're going to go home now. Really enjoyed this one, even though we've cut it short. And if we carried on now, it'd literally be a bit of fun fishing anyway because we've done the job. Power. But look forward to episode six of Carp Pursuit now. We haven't even decided where we're going to go yet, so thinking cap on Stevie. Well, well done on the, another successful challenge. Yeah, we've week. done it, mate, and you know, and, and this was the one, in all fairness, because we had nothing all day, and there were fish here, we were beginning like a little bit, not panic, because we know how to catch a carp, but you're like, mm, is it, isn't it? And then when the first one boomed off, I think it was 11.30, then 1.30, 2, 2.30, and about half past five this morning. So, long story short, We've done it. We're off home. Hope you enjoy it. 
because we certainly enjoy having the crack making them. See you next time.